Saturday is unofficially couples day. There's that two cute couple holding hands as they decide what movie to see in the theater. The guy is super calm and nice and says something like, babe, I don't care what we watch because I'm going to be staring at you the whole time. The girl blushes, giggles, and managed to pick the one rom-com that they both enjoy. Then there's the married couple that spends all day yelling at each other in Walmart or Costco. The husband doesn't want to be there and surely doesn't give a damn about the brand of paper towels they get. The wife, even through her frustration, loves these Saturdays because it'll give them an excuse to have alternative sex later when the kids are asleep. <laughs> and finally, there's that couple that's been together for 50 years. They no longer talk and communicate through grunts and stares. Their grandkids are grown and they don't have to pretend to like each other anymore. But every Saturday, rain or shine, they sit in the swing together on their wraparound porch, rocking, sipping tea, and sighing. So, when Saturdays roll around, it's a glaring reminder to me that I am single, and society says, if I don't get my shit together, I am going to die alone. I mean, my emergency contact is my neighbor who rolls her eyes at me when I tell her she's parked too close to my driveway. My Friday night grocery list includes frozen pepperoni pizza, Ruffles original potato chips, yum, 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 artisan vodka, and the newest release from Redbox. By 9 p.m. on Friday night, my stomach begins to churn and this unrealized anxiety causes the left side of my shoulder to ache. <sighs> I silently plead to the weekend gods to forego Saturday just this once so I don't have to be reminded that I'm single. But honestly, I don't want a boyfriend or a husband. I take pleasure in not having to share my bed with anyone. I appreciate quiet time for reflection and exploration. And my libido has assured me, it is good for going sex for the duration of our existence together. <laughs> but I still manage to wake up on Saturday at 6 a.m. bright eyed and bushy tail like it's the first day of school. I get up. <laughs> Look out the open wooden blinds to the day and yell at my tummy to hush as I watch the couple from two houses down start out on their morning jog together. My internal dialogue is starting up and I shake my head as a way to stop the thoughts before they start, but they start anyway. I'm not jealous of couples. I mean, if someone is willing to tolerate you forever, congratulations, <laughs> because I get on my own damn nerves most of the time. I prefer companionship, a dining mate, or an intellectual sparring partner. I shake my head again to clear the thoughts. I can only imagine what I must look like, standing in a sitting room I never sit in, wearing a men's navy button-down shirt, sprayed with men's cologne, though a man has never worn it, <laughs> multicolored toes gripping the fresh, bouncy carpet, and staring out the window, muttering at myself. All I need is my neighbor to see me, She's been looking for an excuse to stop being my emergency contact. I just know it. <laughs> so I do what any other single person on a Saturday morning would do. I hop online and go to one of the many dreaded dating sites that I am a member of. I, growl, I grunt loudly as the first message in my inbox is of some dude's junk. Come on, at least make sure he is happy and has his hair combed before you start snapping pictures. By the third message, <laughs> right? <laughs> By the third message, I am tempted to go back to my profile to make sure I didn't inadvertently request pictures of penises instead of companionship. <laughs> I didn't. Message number seven. He takes the time to tell me his name, what he does for a living, and he's home today with nothing to do either. Like a dork. I sit up straight on my too large sectional and begin drafting my reply. He's seen my picture, but I want him to know what I look like in the morning. All natural. Why, Chloe? I unbutton my shirt a button too many. I intentionally mess up my hair and toss it to one shoulder and pose that horrible selfie position. Why? He responds immediately and tells me he would not mind waking up beside me every morning. 
It's weird, but this comet makes my tummy do a dip because the last guy I shared my bed with, I asked him to leave before the sun was up. I mean, I have morning routines and he was just gonna be in my way. So he sends me a picture and I hold my breath because if I receive another penis picture, I'm gonna throw my laptop in the trash can or make the world's first collage of penis pics in the shape of a woman crying. <laughs> it's a picture of him in his military uniform. He must have some fascinating stories about the military and his travels. I wonder if he'll debate the real role the military has in our country. He has his beauty mole on his lip like that dapper lawyer from the, sh the show Suits and a smirk that says he knows interesting and important things. My curiosity is piqued, and I hope he won't be offended when I ask if he knows the origins of beauty moles. Stop it, Chloe. Okay, so we've made plans. I'm going to his place, he's gonna cook, I'm bringing the vodka, and we don't have to spend Saturday alone. On the drive to my Saturday companion, I am rocking out to Lacuna Coils. I like it, screaming, today I'm gonna fly. There is nothing that can keep me on the ground. Touch the sky, I'm free inside. And ready for what the day has in store. Before I make my way to his third story apartment that faces the ocean, I lift my boobs and my push-up bra and make sure they can see the world, trying to hold back my own annoyance at myself. Why, Chloe? You know your skin will start to crawl and your neck will do that weird turtle ducking thing if you feel his breath on any part of your skin. So I pull my tea back up and I sigh with relief. I take a deep breath and knock on the door. It is him, beauty mole and all. I can smell spaghetti sauce and soft music is coming from the speakers. Hey Michael, I say leaning in for a hug, but he tilts his head to the side and asks me who I am. Right? I freeze, trying to recall the day's events. Did I show up to a stranger's house? Am I in a coma? Baffled. I stammer, you're, you're Michael, right? We've been talking online all day. Look, I've even brought the vodka. He smiles sheepishly and says, I'm sorry, but I think you have the wrong apartment. No, I'm not in a coma. He has that mole, that tattoo of the snake circling the dagger that he got while stationed in Japan. It is him. And if I was in a coma, I'm sure I'd still be able to hear my neighbor telling me to wake up because she has a bingo tournament she has to get to. Morbid embarrassment is settling in, but I wanna give this trick a piece of my mind. Listen, bucko, I don't wanna sleep with you. The thought of you heaving on top of me makes bile rise from my esophagus and singes my nose hairs. I get the shivers thinking of you, thinking of touching my most private parts. The last time I had ended course, I stood in the shower for almost an hour close to tears afterwards. I just wanted some human contact today to be considered normal, to actually hear someone else's voice and laughter. I was looking forward to sharing military history about our great state and interesting things you may not know about living so close to a large body of water. <laughs> Who are you to deny me the simple pleasures of companionship? Fuck you, Michael is what I wanted to say, but instead I said, oh bummer, I must have the wrong address. Once back in the car, I tune out the song that tries to mock me and make the drive back home refusing to grant my emotions the release of undeserved tears. Back home, I open the bottle of vodka and drink from it like a savage. I shove a handful of ruffles in my mouth and start up my laptop, maybe. I've finally gone insane. There is a fine line between brilliance and madness, or maybe I'm in Minacoma, completely separated and cut off from society. No, I couldn't make up that mole. I go back to that stupid dating site, and I have a message from Michael, it reads, I'm really sorry, Chloe. 
I'm not ready for a relationship and I could not go through with hanging out with you today, not knowing if you were just okay with hooking up, but you look great. I'm relieved I'm not crazy or in a coma. I slowly get up, make my way to the kitchen, take another swig of vodka and throw my laptop in the trash can. In my sitting room, as I begin to close the blinds, briefly contemplating having my neighbor's car towed, <laughs> the truth reveals itself to me, similarly to a book falling from a shelf. Michael's actions are simply a culmination of my uttermost feelings. Today, I admit dating life is not for me. I admit sexual attraction and desire are not about me. I admit societal norms and traditions cannot define my contentment and glee. Today, I'm telling society I'm good and embracing who I really am. And you'll be happy to know until I discover that human companion, I found my very own version of such, a hiking buddy, a vacation partner, a pal to share turkey burger Thursdays with, so what if he has the coat pattern of a dairy cow, Paul Newman blue eyes, happens to walk on four legs and barks when our neighbor encroaches too closely to the driveway? He is a fucking awesome companion and accepts me just the way I am. And will definitely overlord someone if I slip into a coma. <laughs> Chloe Williams, everybody!